So, a panel indeed. Uh, let us introduce ourselves. Let me start myself. So, I'm Dan Bruder. I'm affiliated with the clan and with the humanities cluster of the Royal Dutch Academy. And in shock, I am uh, work package three. I have uh, four colleagues in this uh, panel. Uh, I let them introduce themselves. So, Melanie, can you introduce yourself shortly? Yeah. Hello, hello everyone. Um, some of you uh, already know me, but uh, I'm going to present again. Uh, I'm working on a triple project uh, with Suzanne in the Humanum CNRS. And I'm especially working uh, in the VP2 in the triple project, which is uh, specifically on data, uh, working on data model, uh, on the vocabulary for the theaters, triple theaters, and on the matching learning purposes. Thank you, Melanie, Suzanne. Yeah, thank you, Dan. Thank you for the invitation. So, uh, as Melanie just said, I'm the scientific coordinator of the Triple Project, but I'm also involved in the shop project, uh, especially in the work package seven. Um, and um, and yeah, I'm, I think that's it. Okay, thank you, Susanne. Menzo. <laughs> hey, hello, everyone. I'm Menzo Windhauer, and I'm a uh, affiliated with Clarenim, already for a long time, working on all the registries involved with the semantic interoperability over there. In the past, that was ISOCAT, as was mentioned by Dieter already. And nowadays, that's our open SCOS instances for the Clarin concept registry and the vocabulary service, CLAVAS. Uh, which I, nowadays, I am running these and maintaining them at the Humanities cluster of the Royal Academy, of the Dutch Royal Academy. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Menzo. Uh, Mate, did, did you already introduce yourself when you gave your presentation? In that case, we can. So, Mate Lutzer from the Austrian Academy of Sciences, Austrian Center for Digital Humanities and Cultural Heritage, and leading the development of the marketplace in uh, Work Package 7 in the Shock Project. And I've been with Clarin and Daria also for some time now, and also involved <laughs> in various uh, interoperability. <laughs> <laughs> Your hobby, right? <laughs> and interoperability. Yeah, okay. Thank you, Mate. Uh, okay, although uh, we have a fine uh, group of people to discuss, uh, this does not mean that uh, I want to exclude uh, the audience to uh, take part. So whenever you think uh, we are talking too little, uh, you can intervene and uh, maybe uh, contribute to uh, the discussion that is uh, going on. Now, for panel discussion, uh, I thought of uh, uh, asking the uh, participants to uh, ponder a bit about uh, something that you all know, uh, the FAIR team. I uh, agree that it's not original at all, but nevertheless, I think uh, the FAIR team is a good uh, so a guiding principle. So, uh, talking about a certain, certain aspect of a vocabulary platform or about managing vocabularies, it's always good to think, uh, does it make things more findable, accessible, interoperable, reusable, shareable, et cetera, et cetera. I, I think in that, in that uh, respect, uh, FAIR has, has, it can be quite, quite helpful. Okay. Um, now, the first, first question I thought about, uh, and that's uh, because it was in the, uh, uh, what is it, in the 3.1 task, uh, Monica told you about that in the uh, let's say project description, there is the task of uh, finding requirements uh, for uh, potentially using a single Larry platform for the social science. Humanities. Now, my question for the panel uh, to discuss would be, is actually selecting and sharing a single 
vocabulary platform, uh, would that make the vocabularies themselves more fair? And there I should add, fair, fair in the past was always about uh, data. Does it make data more fair? But I think it has become more and more apparent that uh, uh, semantic uh, artifacts or entities, however you want to name them, uh, to name them are um, first-class citizens in their own right and should also be, be fair. Um, so who wants to, to, to give an answer on that, uh, that question? Menzo. I would like, to, yeah, I think at least it would overcome some of the problems that we currently see with the plethora of vocabulary threat platforms we have at the moment. The problem is there that there is no uniform API for these. So we need mediator wrapper systems like uh, Slava has been developing, for example, in his semantic gateway. And it means that if you find a nice vocabulary that is suitable for your domain, it doesn't mean that you can automatically use it in while you are creating the metadata. You will be dependent if it's properly integrated into the editing environment that you are using. And by resolving at least that, that would a shared vocabulary platform would solve that at least that you would have a, a uniform yeah. API to access them. Yeah. Okay, uh, Matej wants to react, but let me all, let me still inter, interject one, one thing. So we sharing a vocabulary platform that can mean two things. Huh? It can mean we share a single instance or we share the code the, uh, uh, and, and we create a federation of, of, inst of instances, for instance. Okay, Matej, go ahead. Yeah, the good point with this distinction, and I mean, we saw a few Cosmos uh, uh, instances already during the, today, uh, so that would be halfway there, I would say, so that it would at least solve the problem of the unified or harmon uh, API. Uh, I would actually, I mean, okay, short answer to your question, uh, yes, but I don't think it's feasible. Um, I mean, we. I think we should need to um, except a uh, messy world where there is no one to rule them all, but there are, will always be uh, many different uh, actors, stakeholders, and uh, also correspondingly having their own uh, platforms and instances, which also has some, so to, to divide the, the control over or so over the vocabularies, I think that is inherent and it, it can be overcome. And I don't see that there could be one platform that could uh, unify all of the large community and have the, all the vocabularies there. Yep. Okay. Suzanne? I think rather we should account for the plurality. Sorry. Suzanne? You're muted. You're muted. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I just noticed that. Uh, sorry. Yeah, I quite agree with uh, with Matej that, uh, of course, this is something we, we can wish, uh, but I'm not sure it is uh, something very feasible. However, uh, maybe something would be uh, which would be interesting is at least to have a common place where all the existing vocabulary are gathered or uh, the tool uh, to uh, develop or uh, curate the vocabularies are easy to find. So, uh, so I understand that, of course, we, we, uh, this kind of messy uh, context um, is maybe, um, yeah, it, it, it won't be easy to, to, to change this messy context, but, but at least to, uh, together to have a common place where, where we can put all the vocabularies would be nice. And uh, I have two other, uh, two other um, yeah, precision maybe. Um, I think to have vocabulary more fair, it implies also to have to replace maybe the A of adaptable of the fair of accessible by adaptable. Uh, we know that vocabularies are evolving as uh, because concept, language, um, what composed the vocabulary is already is always changing uh, depending on time, and uh, we really think we really need to think how to adapt uh, and to have feedback from the community in order to include the new concept or the evolution of uh, of language. Yeah, the social process. Yeah, and uh, yep. just sorry, a last thing. Uh, I think 
we also need to agree or to be sure that we that we agree on the Mores categories for the SSH because it's also something which is uh, quite uh, important. We say SSH, but as soon as we start to distinguish what kind of discipline are part of the SSH, uh, we should be be sure that we all use the Mores categories or something else, or maybe we need to revise a bit or to update these Mores categories. Uh, so, yeah, so I think this, these are the three points I'd like to, to raise. Yeah, thank you, Suzanne. And you gave an interesting answer there about uh, there's, it would be interesting to have a single place to, where we could at least uh, uh, make the uh, uh, vocabularies visible. And there is, of course, uh, between uh, sharing the same platform, what, what I said uh, earlier, there is still another possibility and that you share the same publication platform at least, but uh, the backend, uh, the curation processes are quite different, uh, right? As, as it's currently, for instance, for Cosmos, um, if, I if I understood that well. Okay. Can um, I still uh, say yeah. something about the yeah, yeah, yeah. API? Mm -hmm. I think it, so you don't have to share all the same instance or even the same system, at least if we could agree on maybe two or three endpoints, an endpoint for autocomplete and an endpoint for getting info about a specific concept. And many of the platforms would implement that, you would already make a huge leap in getting into more interoperability on the API side, at least. Yeah, but indeed. But getting back to, to let's say, not, the API is important, of course. If you have tools that you want to, in, uh, that you want to integrate with, with framework where, where you can find uh, vocabularies, et cetera. But uh, let's look at FAIR, the findability aspect of uh, the, the uh, vocabularies. I think there uh, it would be quite helpful if we could come to some uh, better, some coherent descriptions of vocabularies, if only for um, allowing users to find those vocabularies that they actually need. And it does not need to be then uh, published in, a, in one, one instance, uh, but you, there are ways to harvest the metadata and to make a uh, catalog of all the available uh, vocabularies, of course. Um, but I, I doubt the use of uh, vocabulary. If you can find a vocabulary, but you cannot use it in your editor, what is to use? And if you cannot link mm, to the URIs that you well, find of the terms I in the vocabulary. You can always, I assume that they will be accessible too, so that at least you can download, you, know, you can download the uh, uh, vocabulary. Um, otherwise it doesn't make much uh, sense. I think what so the researcher, is, is, is... So the researcher can download a, a vocabulary, but how is he gonna use it in his specific use case? Yeah, that that depends on his environment, but Mate. Yes, okay. So we're back at the yeah. URI. At least we share the SCOS model then. No, I, I agree with Menzo that API would be nice and it should be integrated, as I said, in the in the offering applications. But my experience from, so what the Menzo, Menzo's desire I, it sounds for me like a, a technical uh, view. And my experience with, with researchers is they, uh, they certainly won't ask if there is an API. They want to see the vocabulary. Well, it's already the good case if you want to see an existing vocabulary and are willing to use them in an Excel sheet or whatever. Uh, normally they actually say not invented here and this is rubbish and I need to have my own vocabulary. So um, yeah. but this is this right. thing. Can also but be yes, for very... findability, minimal metadata and a, and a common catalog or common catalogs, I think is would be the way. And that doesn't preclude that there cannot be a, a, a harmonized API. But still, even if there is a harmonized API, you need a common catalog or ways to discover the, the vocabularies. Yeah. And that is relatively low hanging fruit, I think. Uh, 
well, compared compared with some of the other uh, megalomaniac schemes that have been uh, <laughs> <laughs> passed today, uh, right? Um, but I think it should not be difficult to agree about that. Um, uh, Dan? Yeah? Uh, I have a question from a novice perspective. Um, yes, I'm, correct. Uh, yes, uh, I'm, I'm wondering, um, do researchers, when they create vocabularies, do they take into consideration the guidelines that uh, bw 3 uh, uh, c has, uh, have developed? Such as? For, for creating vocabularies, which specifies yeah. the first uh, guideline is define a clean and stable URI uh, using a careful URI naming strategy. Mm -hmm. And then choose the proper language to model your vocabulary, uh, make your vocabulary self descriptive, provide documentation, and provide a versioning policy, and publish the vocabulary at a stable URI. So I found these guidelines uh, just doing my research. I'm wondering why, yeah. why are not they? Yeah, they're quite Do researchers follow them or not? <laughs> Do you think that, so? That, that would avoid a lot of lots <laughs> problems, I imagine, right? <laughs> I think these are, these these are requirements or recommendations that can be uh, applied by uh, data stewards or uh, for, what do you say sem semantic uh, uh, artifact stewards, but are probably not within the uh, uh, let's say our first priorities of researchers. Uh, mm -hmm. Do we need maybe to, to raise awareness then about it if we want let's say uh, better interoperable. Uh, Vocabularies. Yeah, I think we a... need to make that we need to make it simple for the research. So uh, that is the default way or the, the the way of least resistance for them. So if we provide them uh -huh. with a vocabulary editor or an application yes. that actually does, the, I think all these kind of guidelines actually should be supported by the system. So the vocabulary yes. team and so on that has to be uh, uh, the, the 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 system that, uh, for editing the data or the book uh, has to guide the. Uh, researcher yes. towards that. Yeah, you're right. Okay, um, so we have now discussed a bit uh, the F of uh, FAIR. Uh, I think the A has to be accessible. We all agree about, uh, about that. Uh, but what about the I, the interoperability? Uh, we touched upon it when we discussed that create a consolidated catalog of vocabularies that we need to agree about at least a core set of the metadata describing the vocabularies. But uh, some of the presentations also included, uh, let's say, wonderful tools how to make the content of the vocabularies actually um, interoperable, yeah? Uh, providing ways to uh, specify mappings between the vocabulary terms. Um, I think for it, especially for large vocabularies that uh, hang around in the uh, communities, this will be a very uh, challenging, challenging things, but it might be worthwhile. What do you think? Well, my main concern there is how you maintain these kind of uh, mm -hmm. over time. So while yeah. there is a project like Shock, you basically can pay, pay for doing that mm -hmm. but you have to continuously have the effort of doing that properly and if depending on what you want this can be quite a knowledge engineering effort so it needs very specific specialistic knowledge about ontological mapping to mm -hmm. not break any of the semantics and well in our our um in the Clarin uh, experience, it's hard to maintain this at the voluntary level and to, yeah. to reach certain uh, yeah, endpoints to keep that stable. Yeah. Yeah, that's, so I'm, uh, that's my concern there. Yeah. yeah. Yes, please. Sorry, can I ask a question uh, related to this? Of course. Yes. Go ahead, Francisca. Yeah, I, uh, thank you all for your very uh, uh, useful and deep insights. Um, the sustainability of whatever is, is, is going to be proposed is indeed uh, an issue. And um, I just wanted to mention that this is being discussed in all uh, in, in the various layers of the of uh, shock as a project. Um, uh, and I think that some parties uh, will have possibilities to sustain the things that they invest in. 
in in this project, even though they, they would love to have some additional funding for that. So at a, at a minimal level, I think uh, there would be possibilities. So I think from this community or from this activity, this, this uh, um, uh, vocabulary harmonization initiative, uh, recommendations to, let's say, the, the shock uh, tier one and, uh, and the project management board could, could maybe be expressed so that we keep this on board in, in our discussions on, on sustainability. The other question I, I, comment I would like to make is, on the one hand, we talk about SSH as a domain, which is um, a domain with uh, half a million professional researchers. So uh, easily diversity is, is, uh, um, is more common than um, uh, interoperability. Uh, but I think for uh, uh, the work done in shock, just within the project proper, the, the work pack packages that have terminological um, uh, tasks uh, uh, in, the, in their work plan, uh, I think we, we could at least give it a try to, to work towards uh, the interoperability. Um, because then at least uh, the rest of the field may look for, may find a place to look for good examples, even though they may not be able to follow them or be willing to follow them all the time. But then at least there is a place where we demonstrate how things can be done. So I would, I would recommend to uh, make an effort within shock um, to have some good use cases for uh, interoperability across platforms. Susan, do you want to say something? Yes, uh, thank you, Dan. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I support, uh, completely support what, uh, what Francisca has just said. Uh, I think, uh, so, yeah, I, I had a suggestion. It was more for the, your second question, Dan, but it, uh, it, it's fine uh, now. So just to say that I think I need, we, we need uh, in SSH a common project uh, dedicated to SSH vocabularies, uh, maybe uh, uh, as a follow-up of, of the shock project. Uh, in order to, to decide uh, to, to, to agree and validate on common SSH vocabularies uh, with maybe uh, two aspects, uh, generic, uh, generic uh, vocabularies for all the SSH and then smaller or more precise uh, vocabularies dedicated to uh, each of the SSH uh, uh, discipline. And of course, uh, with, the, uh, by def with the, the definition of a procedure to have uh, uh, updated SSH uh, vocabularies and, uh, and uh, interoperability between the vocabularies. So I think this is uh, maybe, uh, to me, uh, this is where uh, Clarine has to play a major role, <laughs> I can say. I think uh, this is uh, typically uh, yeah, something on which we can uh, ask uh, yeah, uh, the experts of Clarine. And um, a second aspect to answer very concretely to your question about the interoperability, uh, I think we should uh, definitely use more uh, Wikidata for that, uh, for the, the update of the, of the concept and of the, yeah, and the, the, the tr their translation. Yeah. Matei, you also wanted to say something? I think yeah, just distinguishing, I would like to distinguish between the technical and semantic interoperability. I think for the technical interoperability, we are in good, good way yeah. with COS and API and the semantic. I'm wondering if it's even, so my experience is that even two colleagues uh, in sitting in the same room cannot agree on the same vocabulary, cannot agree on the same uh, meaning for a, for a concept. So yeah. um, in, uh, that's kind of inherently uh, an issue. Uh, and, and I want, want then one solution there is uh, kind of in the extreme case that everybody has their own vocabulary and they are just linked among each other. So, or well, extreme. I mean, so if you cannot agree, you can create your own vocabulary, but still there can be interoperability through kind of matching uh, uh, or linking related terms. Uh, Matej. Yeah. yeah. So um, I, I'm wondering again, uh, as a novice, um, is it possible to standardize these uh, these concepts? Let's say vocab standardize the concepts used across the main. What do you mean standardize? Uh, like with the help of the ISO committee, for example, that we have ISO committees for terminology. <laughs> we you could also we could also have a committee just to help us standardize uh, and to put an end to all the, the discussions. <laughs> well, short, short answer from my experience, I would say no. No. It okay. will, the entropy will always win and it will be always uh, getting more. Uh, so I would rather try to find an approach that accounts for plurality of, of, uh, yeah. of the world. Hmm. 
maybe I can yeah, sorry, sorry. Maybe, maybe I can suggest uh, uh, with respect to the scalability of it all because this takes lots of effort of course to uh, create mappings between vocabularies to also um, the uh, pragmatic uh, strategy there. Um, I think you do not always need to map all the uh, vocabulary entries on all the vocabulary entries of another vocabulary. Uh, you only need to map part of one vocabulary on part of another vocabulary. And that is something that you can probably manage within the uh, scope of uh, one project. Of course, it will be quite useful to keep that mapping around for others to uh, uh, to use, so share, and others to uh, uh, build upon if they need to extend uh, that mapping. Um, by the way, this is the topic of uh, one uh, small other project I'm, I'm working in, uh, so a uh, uh, pragmatic uh, semantic interoperability uh, framework. And uh, yeah, well, you've, re you've read the paper <laughs> there, Mate, and uh, we'll be in contact about that. But I think if you keep the uh, let's say the, the pragmatic strategy in mind and don't try to go for uh, total solutions the, 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 then it, it things become more easy to to handle it might not be so uh, satisfying perhaps uh, because you're only doing a small part and maybe it's uh, it, it will not be of any value after the project you're working on goes away but still, yeah, I think it's it's manageable and it should be uh, uh, more considered in these kinds of uh, uh, challenges. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else that wants to say something about uh, the, the the fair aspect, also from the audience? Because we are almost. We still have four minutes. Maybe I can still say something or yep. sorry. You're also audience. Okay. So I'm currently in lots of projects. I see this where we have to deal with a level uncertainty and something in that's also true in the mappings that we create here. Mm -hmm. And it's all, not always reflected up to the end user. So in our case, when we do mappings from one vocabulary to another, and we even have an intermediate backbone taxonomy. Let's say you have the source vocabulary and you have a close match to a concept in between and then another close match to the target vocabulary. These close matches are not uh, transitive. So you end up with a very fuzzy relationship, which might still be useful for um, resource discovery but it's it's a very you have to make somehow clear to the end user that you have actually followed a very fuzzy uncertain relationship and this is not something that we are making clear to end users at the moment and often the case is we present mm -hmm. these things as this is the the truth and they are not aware that there's a lot of this kind of fuzzy interpretation in between. So yeah, that's this is correct. one of my pet projects at the moment. So, mm -hmm. so how would you solve that? Uh, have metadata related to every mapping that uh, also expresses a confidence level? Yeah, you need you need to have provenance uh, in the relationships yeah. and that you propagate onwards and that you are at least able to present to the end user where did this relation come from and how certain am I yeah. of it. It's, so it's, it's more like a quality quality assessment of the mapping. Yes, so. but that, that will travel mm -hmm. while yeah. you are following the network. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, that's uh, it's quite uh, correct. Uh, good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Andrea. Maybe please. I can point out what I already typed into the chat that um, currently in the Fair Sphere project, um, people work with larger groups on a on a set of recommendation, and one of them concerns the 
um, the semantic interoperability, which directly has to do with vocabulary and other knowledge organization systems. And if you look into this deliverable, which I linked into the chat, and I, I was able to sit in in some of the consultation, it's, uh, people try to make an as complete list of aspects which might be relevant. Yeah. And it's a I, bit of a wish list, an ideal list also, yeah. But I think it's good to engage uh, with these discourses because they already mapped out a lot of aspects, player. Uh, I know, I've seen the draft, Andrea. Yeah. So indeed, it's quite quite methodic and it, it, uh, it focuses on uh, treating, uh, let's say, the f f uh, semantic artifacts as... Uh, uh, yeah, data that has to be made fair too. And there are a few differences with normal data. Uh, yeah, but it's it indeed also, quite methodic. I also had several iterations done, and mm. I was sitting into a consultation they did a couple of weeks ago with a with a number of uh, repository vocabulary repository service mm. provider also. Yeah. And uh, there is an upcoming workshop in the Fair Sphere Convergence Symposium. I also put a link to that, although the website is, uh, uh, yeah, can be improved, I would say. Um, and in, in, in one of the seminars, there will be talks also on a concept called Fair Digital Object. So that's a dis another kind of discourse, which is broader than uh, vocabularies, but uh, also de deals with semantic interoperability, that means machine kind of yeah. machine, machine actionability. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think at least the Clarin uh, community is uh, aware of this and in, involved. Uh, so we are following following that too. Uh, indeed, uh, th these are nice uh, I say developments, Andrea. And uh, yeah, as I, as I, I think I think the fair is, uh, is a nice concept to, to uh, um, to use when you are analyzing what these is going kinds on of... in parallel then I also agree that the what is now kind of labeled fair is our discussions which have been around uh, I wouldn't say for a century but maybe they have been for a century around yeah it a lot is going on in parallel that's why I actually very much enjoyed this workshop if I may say mm. that um, because it brought you may say so. so many initiatives so thank you very much yeah thank you Thank you. So I think we uh, we made it. Uh, Can I have one one last ah, question? Okay. For, for uh, so what is the where do we go from here? Uh, will there be a shock platform? If yes, I want to be in it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, yeah, you will. You will, we built you in just as the uh, mechanical <laughs> Turk, right? <laughs> No, but yeah, so so now kind of this is the, I, this workshop is like a synthesis of all the findings yeah, I, and what the. Yeah. So I say you are the platform. <laughs> you are the platform. Yeah. <laughs> so the, yeah. But, so so what is is there a plan how to how to proceed? No, we, I, th I think okay. we we will continue the discussions about uh, uh, I mean, select selecting it. But I uh, you are right from the what you said what you stated in the beginning. We probably will not come to a single shared platform for uh, managing our uh, vocabulary. But that's my, my personal uh, opinion at the moment, but I think it's a uh, informed uh, uh, opinion. So I think it's, uh, it, but it is very worthwhile to think about interoperability between the platforms that will be used, right? So what are exchange mechanisms? I think in Dieter's uh, presentation, there was already how to import, how to export, well, that's Minimum you would uh, would like to see, but maybe we can also come to some kind of identification scheme, for instance, for the different uh, uh, vocabularies that are then residing in it. So a, a uh, vocabulary, a fair semantic uh, uh, vocabulary federation. Uh, that that where where the uh, the, the the repository. Uh, stewards, uh, maintainers uh, uh, sign up to the federation contract and, and maintain the vocabularies in an agreed way. And this will also increase uh, drastically the quality of uh, the things they uh, maintain. So, but uh, like your optimism. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, uh, but I think we need a bit more of a discussion uh, still. Good. Yeah. Okay. okay, any other famous last words? No? Then uh, I will thank the panel. <laughs>